A sweet kid turned rebel, addict, felon. I wanted people to love me. I wanted that acceptance. When he thought he'd lost everything, he found hope where he least expected it. How I didn't go to prison that day is, is literally a, a miracle from God. Plus, sleep disorders affect more than 60 million Americans. Are you one of them? Some answers to your sleep problems aren't just in the bedroom, they're in your kitchen, too. Find out how to protect your sleep on today's 700 Club Interactive. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. We're glad you've joined us. Indeed, we're going to be taking time to pray for your needs today. But first, we want to help you learn how you can get a good night's sleep. Did you know you can give yourself a head start to a good night's sleep? Taking inventory of what's in your kitchen can actually help you increase your chances of sleeping well. Take a look. The signs are all around us. It's the man at the traffic light yawning. It's a woman in a meeting at work fighting to keep her eyes open. And maybe it's you. Over 60 million Americans suffer from a sleep disorder. What might surprise you is some of the answers to your sleep problems aren't just in the bedroom. They're in your kitchen too. You know, so if somebody is in generally cranky, if people have bags under their eyes, if people are have that rounded forward posture, those are all warning signs that, you know, externally that people aren't getting enough sleep. Dr. Josh Axe is on a mission. Every day through his website, draxe.com, and his YouTube channel, he's sharing all natural solutions to help people live healthier lives. He sees the high price people are paying because of their stress-filled lives, and Dr. Axe wants to change that. You know, if you think about it today, you know, we are in traffic jams, we are stress at work, stress in family. Well, a lot of us have these really high levels of cortisol due to all of these stressors we have today, and that's really a big part of why people aren't getting enough sleep. Our bodies aren't built for the pace of life that technology has brought us. It probably started when Thomas Edison introduced electric lights to streets and homes, and people have been losing sleep ever since. Today, people are overexposed to light by our always-on lifestyles. The result is our bodies aren't getting the restorative sleep that they need. People had candlelight, that's a natural orange light that your brain doesn't react to as well and you get sleepy. You know, our ancestors, they would go to bed, an hour or two after the sun went down and wake up at sunrise, so they got plenty of sleep. We're designed to work best when given enough time to rest and restore. So when you're sleeping and your body isn't having to process food and be using energy to think and all these other interactions within your body, it is the time where your body is best able to repair, recover, and actually heal itself. You can give yourself a head start to a good night's sleep. Surprisingly, it begins with overhauling your kitchen. Take some time to get rid of all the foods that are draining you of your sleep and replace them with foods that will charge up your life. The big things we wanna stay away from in terms of food, you wanna stay away from sugar, refined grains, artificial sweeteners, hydrogenated oils, and any packaged processed foods not only will these foods rob you of sleep, they've also been linked to chronic illnesses like heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and cancer. So if it comes in a package and has a list of ingredients a mile long, stay away. Here are foods that you want to add to your shopping list. So number one, herbs. Number two, we need more vegetables. Number three, we need more fruit, specifically berries. Berries are contain antioxidants and certain types of carbohydrates that can create a healthy night's sleep. Number four, uh, nuts and seeds. Number five is going to be whole sprouted ancient grains like rice, oats, and quinoa. Start adding healthy fats to your shopping cart. These fats are another important part of staying healthy and getting a good night's sleep. So healthy fats can include avocados, coconut, wild caught salmon, nuts and seeds like walnuts, chia, and flax seeds. These healthy fat foods are great for regulating hormones in your body. Make sure you also add spices to your shopping cart. 
Cooking with spices is a simple way to stay healthy. Turmeric is fantastic. In fact, there are more clinical and medical studies on turmeric proving its overall health benefits for reducing inflammation and supporting the brain and the gut than any other herb out there today. So turmeric is very high on this list. And then ginger. You know, ginger is anti-inflammatory and really one of the ultimate herbs for supporting your digestive system. You might have heard that chicken soup is good for the soul. It's also great for your health. A study by the University of Nebraska Medical Center found that chicken broth helps boost your immune system. It also supports respiratory and digestive health, and that means more restorative sleep. Now, bone broth is really high in collagen, which we all know is great for your skin, hair, nails, your joints, your immune system, your gut and digestive health, but also the amino acids in bone broth are great for supporting your body's sleep cycles, partly because of how it supports your gut and your neurological health. Another food that is great for your gut and your brain is kale. It's been called a superfood and there are many reasons why. Here's one of them. It's loaded with magnesium. Magnesium helps fight insomnia by calming your nervous system. So go green and add kale to your diet. After that, Reward yourself with a piece of dark chocolate. It's high in magnesium too. Number one, if you can't change your whole diet, just change breakfast. Think about this. If you just change your breakfast, you're changing 33% of your diet. Wake up in the morning and do a superfood smoothie. You know, one scoop of a collagen protein or a bone broth uh, powder that's high in protein. And maybe a little bit of coconut milk and almond milk in there, cup of berries, a little bit of cinnamon. So do a superfood smoothie for breakfast. Limit the amount of coffee you drink during the day. If you don't, you are sabotaging your sleep. If you're having coffee after three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you know, starting to get later in the day or especially at nighttime, even if you do fall asleep, that caffeine is keeping cortisol higher and it is affecting your sleep cycle. So coffee later in the day or lots of caffeine is a big no-no when it comes to getting quality sleep. If you want to sleep like a baby at night, then you need to move your body during the day. Exercise is an important part of your health and primes your body for sleep. If we don't move at all during the day and we're not working out at all, our body kind of says to itself, well, I didn't do much, I didn't do much today, so my sleep tonight isn't as crucial. So exercise, listen, whether you go in the gym and lifting weights or on the treadmill or you just go for a 20 minute walk outside, that's great as well. As your day comes to an end, be sure your bedroom is a sanctuary for sleep. Here's a list to help create the perfect sleep environment. Keep it clean and quiet. Get rid of all electronic devices. That includes a TV. Use a bed that is not too firm and not too soft. Set the temperature below 70 degrees. And use an essential oil diffuser. You know, one of the number one things I recommend all my patients do to get a better night's sleep is start using essential oils. You know, essential oils are referenced more than 300 times in the Bible. My three favorite essential oils to get a better night's sleep are gonna be lavender, Roman chamomile, and holy basil. Don't lose another night of sleep. Start making changes to your diet today. Go for a walk outside with a friend. Remember, life is a gift from God. He wants you to experience a life that is abundant and full. You can with a perfect night's sleep. That life calls for us to rest. And who knew there is a direct link between what you eat mm -hmm. and the quality of your sleep? Well, it seems like so much more has been done in research mm -hmm. recently on the value of sleep and what happens maybe more significantly if when we don't, don't get absolutely. what we need. Well, we have a free Protect Your Sleep DVD or a booklet for you. It's a five-part series available when you call our toll-free number, which is 1-800-700-7000, or you can get it by logging on to cbn.com. But obviously, as you can see from that piece, getting a good night's sleep matters to everybody. Indeed. Well, up next, do you have a prodigal child in your family or does someone you know? If God was good, how could he allow this to happen? I remember kind of me saying, okay, right back at you, God. I'll throw in the towel on you. 
See how a 90-year-old stranger helps this prodigal find his way home. When Rusty Boroff was 11, his best friend died accidentally. Rusty turned all his rage on God and years of rebellion followed. He became a homeless drug addict and a felon. But through it all, his mother never stopped praying for her prodigal son to come home. I liked people looking my way. I liked people laughing when I would do something dumb. Felt like I had to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Just took it too far. Well, I grew up in a pretty normal blue collar family. Awesome parents, very loving mom. Always smiling. He had a wonderful sense of humor. A lot like his dad, he could always crack a joke and make you laugh. He was just a sweetheart. At that age, I was trying to fit in, just trying to impress kids and, and, and have people like me and be the cool kid. I wanted people to love me. I wanted that acceptance. I found it in anybody who would give it to me. The church I grew up in, it was, it was a rules-based church. That yearning to be like that, yearning for acceptance, I didn't find that in church. I didn't find that in God because that wasn't the God that I knew. I didn't know about His grace. I didn't know about His love. The God I knew was, was rules. And when you didn't live up to those rules, when you didn't live up to those standards, um, God didn't have any room for you. If God was good, how could He allow this to happen? I'd already felt like God had started throwing the towel on me. That was the first time I remember kind of me saying, okay, right back at you, God, I'll throw in the towel on you. If I got close to someone else again, then in the end, I get hurt. That's what my heart, that's what my mind, my emotions told me was, don't get close to anybody. Life for me was pretty lonely, and I think that's what drove me wanting everybody to like me and do whatever I could to get that attention and went to extreme measures to do that. Oh, Lori and I clung to prayer so often. We had scriptures almost every day that um, we prayed. We'd pray, do whatever it takes to bring him to you. And his righteousness endures forever. I started seeing these people like during worship, raise their hands and stuff. I've never seen that type of stuff. I'm like, this is weird. But then it got to the sermon point. He started talking about the prodigal son, how when the prodigal son comes home, not only is it just forgiven, but it's a time to celebrate. And that's where, you know, I started feeling emotions like joy and peace that I had never felt before. I saw the peace that I was missing in life. All I had to do was, was to take it, to take His grace, to take His forgiveness, to take His love. But I had a tough time trusting the person who was giving those things to me. It's so hard to tell your child that he could not be in his home. Lori, God loves Rusty more than you. And I thought, oh, was that enough? And then a few days later, she said, Deb, I cling to that every day because it's true. The Lord kept telling me things aren't what they seem. He designed Rusty, he created Rusty, he wired Rusty. I mean, if I didn't go to God, what would I have? 
He was my hope. They accepted me for being a drug addict. They accepted me for being an alcoholic. When I was homeless, they were homeless with me. I, I hated it. It was like the pit of my existence. I had that internal fight inside of me, you know, because I had enough taste of, of who God was to know that what I was doing was wrong. It was my fault, you know, it was my fault. I didn't feel like I was worth loving or deserving of love either. I realized that I needed to do whatever I needed to do to be there for my kid. I didn't want my child to go through the pain of trying to fit in like I went through. I wanted him to always feel like even if no one else liked him in the world, he still had me. Morrow would come in every Sunday, and he wasn't the most exciting person to talk to, but it was never what Merle said to me that really made a difference. It's what he did. He showed me God cared by being there. I mean, what else would, would drive this 90-year-old guy to come and talk to me? Out of all the things I had done wrong in my life, here was this guy, and he was consistent. It showed me that God could forgive me. I didn't have the drugs, I didn't have the alcohol anymore. It was, it was just God. My prayer was, was very raw of saying, God, if you're real, if I can actually trust you, then this is, this is the time I need you. The judge knew my reputation. He knew my criminal history. He knew everything I had done. So how I didn't go to prison that day is, is literally a, a miracle from God. That is the only way to explain that. It was, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Now I have a purpose. If God wants, I'm gonna let him use my life. It's amazing. It is nothing short of a miracle. Just trust in God and that's it. Never, ever, ever, ever give up. I know the power of prayer because I have experienced it. And I know it was Jesus. I know he was right there. God's love has no barriers. It didn't matter my reputation, all the hearts I had broke, all the bad things I had done. There's nothing that can keep God's love away from us. Yeah, I love Rusty's story because it just is such a reminder, such a, a trophy, if you will, of God's character. No matter what we do, no matter how far we go, He waits. He doesn't just wait, he orchestrates things that happen in the midst of the mess that we make so that we can see him standing there, so that we can see his arms outstretched, so that we can see our own pitiful need of him. And he waits. There's so many pictures of who Jesus is, you know, the lion, the lamb. I love the picture of him as a shepherd because the scripture says he'll leave the 99 to go after the one who's lost. That's how precious you are to him. 
today maybe you struggle with some of the, the same things Rusty did. Oh, you might not you might not be on heavy drugs. You might not be involved in things you shouldn't be involved in, but you don't trust God because there have been some things that have happened in your life that you've questioned. And you know, we all have that. We all have that. The thing is, we don't see things the way God sees them. We don't even see each other that way. You know, the Bible says man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. He sees the value of who we are, who he created us to be. And he's on a mission to get you home, to get you home to his heart, to get you home to the plan and the purpose and the intent with which you were created. And so many times we get hung up on what didn't happen the way we thought it should, disappointments we've had in life. You know, we guard our hearts. I mean, Rusty talked about that. If I love anyone, if I trust anyone, I'm going to get hurt again. Well, getting hurt is a part of life for all of us. There's nobody who gets through this without that. When we get hurt, what we need to understand is it's the Father's heart we need to run to. He's the one who can comfort us, the one who will never leave us or forsake us. The Savior is the one who died for us to cover our own mess and our own poor choices. Today, God's there for you. He always has been. He never changes the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you can come to him right now. Just say, God, I've been running from you, and I am done. I'm undone by myself. I'm undone by life. I need you. I want to know why I'm here, who you are, what I was created for, what happens to my life. I want you to change the way I think. I want you to change the way I feel about things. I want you to show me how to see things from your perspective, God. Give God permission to do that. Wave the white flag of surrender. You've messed up. It's okay. He gets that. Invite him into your heart and life. That's the whole point of the journey we're on here. And then live the abundant life that Jesus says that's what he came for. Get set free from bitterness, resentment, anger, all of that junk, and receive the love of God that will forever change you. If you need to pray with someone, call our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. There's a friend waiting to chat with you right now. Ephraim? He's a prayer answering God. So up next, we're going to take time to pray for your needs. So don't go away. Here on the 700 Club Interactive, we like to take time to pray for our viewers. And we have some prayer requests from our social media followers. If you have any prayer requests you want to share with us, please find us on Facebook and Instagram to send those to us. We have some that have come through already. This is Sarah who writes, Please pray for my mom. She has dementia and my sister has acid reflux. I also have ringing in my left ear and my right shoulder feels frozen. And then Stephanie says, please join me in praying for my sister Kay, who is dying in a nursing home. Pray for her health to be restored in Jesus' name. Mary says, please pray for young William, who has gallbladder disease. She wants him to be healed and for him to regain strength. And then Esther is asking for prayer for her to have a successful delivery of twins this month and for God to provide her with a new job. Let's pray. Yes, everyone. indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, we come before you as your children today, acknowledging that apart from you, we can do nothing. But in you, Lord, you have given us such power, such authority. And so we speak to these circumstances that have been presented to us by your children, Lord. I pray for Sarah, who's struggling. Her mom is struggling. She's struggling. She has a sister with issues. You know all of their health needs, everything from dementia to the acid reflux to the frozen shoulder. God, would you just speak into each of their bodies right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Bodies, aright yourself with the perfect will of God. Let the kingdom of heaven come and be present in their bodies and in their lives. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. And then Stephanie, we, she prays for her sister Kay. And God, we join her with that. You've said where two or more are gathered, you're right there in the midst of them. So together, Ephraim and I and all who are watching, unite our prayers with Stephanie's prayers for Kay. Lord, as she is in that, that nursing home, that, that home where she is not doing well, where they're expecting her to die, would you speak life to her, even as you did to Lazarus? Just pray, Kay, come forth in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be made whole. 
And Father, we lift up young William who has a gallbladder disease. We thank you, Father God, that Mary has sought to speak his name and send his name to us. We speak his name, Father God. Let your healing virtue flow through his body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet that he may be healed and rejoice and be a testimony to your healing power. And Father, we lift up Esther who's asking for prayer because she wants a successful delivery of twins this month, Lord God. Thank you for blessing her womb to give mm -hmm. birth, Father God. We thank you that those two children will be blessed and they will be born to give your name praise and glory. And Father, help her to realize that you are the source, you are her provider. So even as she is seeking a new job, we know that you will withhold no good thing from us, Father. So we claim that new job for her as well because you are her provider and we are grateful for the opportunity to speak all of their names and lift them up before you. In Jesus' name we pray. And there's Amen. someone else who's somebody who is suffering with extreme arthritis. You've had this pain for a long time. It's so difficult. Just opening things like jars or mm. Tupperware is so hard for you. God is healing you right now. Just lift up your hands, begin to rejoice in the Lord as this all diminishes and you find full restoration in Jesus name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you for being with us. We want to share this scripture with you as we leave you today. It's from Proverbs 19. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. And aren't we rejoicing in that? Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time.